Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing all the muscles of the feet. And this is a table that summarizes really the origins, insertions, innervations, and actions. And this looks a lot more complicated than it really is. Um, I think if we break these down into their individual layers, we can make some sense of all the muscles in the feet. Before we get into all these individual muscles right here and all the layers and so forth, we need to have a good reference point so we know what we're talking about when we say a superficial layer, which will turn out to be layer one, or a deep layer, layer four. And so to get that, we're going to look at this picture of this foot right here. Now this is obviously just bones and a few ligaments of the foot, but imagine this is your foot for a minute. And imagine you're standing up, maybe you're already standing up. And if you're standing up, obviously your feet or your foot right here is in contact with the floor. The superficial layer of muscles is going to be the layer of muscles closest to the floor. Okay. The deepest layer of muscles is going to be up here closest to the bones, okay? So at least in how we've drawn the picture, okay, the deep layer, at least while you're standing, is going to be more superior, and the superficial layer is going to be most inferior. It's going to be closest to the floor. So if you really want to understand how we're diving into these muscles, you can kind of look at the plantar surface of your foot, that is, look at the sole of your foot, and that's kind of how we're entering the foot and talking about the layers. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, before we get into all those individual muscles, we need to understand that there's a layer of plantar fascia that is superficial even to those muscles. Okay, We can call this layer zero. This is the superficial plantar fascia. And we can see right here, there's a thickening of this plantar fascia. And this region right here that connects to the calcaneus posteriorly, this is called the plantar aponeurosis. Okay. Plantar aponeurosis is a thickening of the plantar fascia, and it's similar to what we find in the palm of the hand, which would be the palmar aponeurosis if you've watched that playlist. You'll notice that the palmar aponeurosis, or aponeurosis, has extensions that go out to all of these digits. So that is the great toe, or the, uh, the hallux, the second digit, third digit, fourth digit, and the fifth digit. Okay. There's also lateral plantar fascia over here that's not a specifically a part of the plantar aponeurosis. And then there's medial plantar fascia over here. Okay? Now, the plantar aponeurosis acts as a strong tie for the longitudinal arches of the feet. You can see here that the plantar aponeurosis posteriorly, or I could say proximally, is going to attach to the medial process of the calcaneus. And that's going to be the posterior attachment. And again, you can see the extensions of that plantar aponeurosis, and it's going to attach anteriorly to the heads of the metatarsals for each of the five digits. Okay. Now, the reason we start by looking at the plantar aponeurosis is that if you're doing a cadaver dissection, you actually have to peel back or reflect all of the plantar aponeurosis to see the underlying muscles. You'd also have to remove the lateral plantar fascia and the medial plantar fascia. Okay? So assuming you've done that, we'll now dive in and look at the layer directly deep to the plantar fascia and plantar aponeurosis, and that's the first layer of muscles of the feet. Okay, so layer one of muscles of the feet has three muscles in it, and those are adductor hallucis, flexor digitorum brevis, and flexor digiti quinti. Some sources will call it digiti minimi. Digiti minimi usually refers to the pinky, that is the fifth digit of the hand. Quinti refers to the fifth digit of the foot. So while some sources will say minimi, I'm going to stick to using abductor digiti quinti whenever I'm talking about the fifth digit. So these are the three muscles in this layer of the foot. They are directly deep to the plantar aponeurosis and these two portions of the plantar fascia, and they're superficial to layer two of the foot. Now let's talk about identifying them. Now abductor hallucis, or hallucis, is going to be on the hallux side or great toe side of the foot. You can see that muscle right here. If you follow its tendon around here to the hallux, it's going to insert on the medial side of the great toe. This is the medial side over here. Look down at your feet. This is the medial side, and on the digiti quinti side, this would be the lateral side. 
We want to get really specific about abductor helicis. It's going to originate on the medial calcaneus and partly on the plantar aponeurosis, and it's going to insert on the proximal phalanx of the hallux, or the big toe. Okay? This muscle is going to abduct the great toe, so it's going to pull the great toe or the hallux out this way. Okay? Now, unless you specifically train this movement, this is probably a movement you're not going to be able to do. Um, it's something that just takes a lot of training to do it, um, so it's not going to be a movement that's very significant. Okay? The same thing's going to go for the abductor on the other side, which is going to be the abductor digiti quinti. Okay? That's this muscle over here. Again, if you follow its tendon out here, you can guess it's going to insert on the lateral side of the digiti quinti, or the fifth digit of the foot. More specifically, abductor digiti quinti originates off the lateral side of the calcaneus, which is over here, and then it's also going to originate partly off of the plantar aponeurosis, just like abductor hallucis, but this one's going to insert on the proximal phalanx of the fifth digit. Okay? Now, when you're learning this layer, understand that you've got two abductors. Okay, you've got an abductor hallucis and an abductor digiti quinti. They both have to insert on the external side of whatever digit that they're inserting on, and that's because they're going to abduct it. They're going to pull it away from the midline. So abductor hallucis has to insert on this side of the hallux in order to pull it this way to abduct the great toe. Likewise, abductor digiti quinti has to insert on this side of the digiti quinti in order to pull it this way, which would be classified as abduction of the digiti quinti. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. The third muscle in this layer is flexor digitorum brevis. Now this muscle, notice its muscular part is completely within the foot. That differs from flexor digitorum longus. Flexor digitorum longus, remember that muscle, is completely within the sura of the leg, meaning it's deep to the gastrocnemius soleus complex. Okay? Its tendon reaches into the foot, but flexor digitorum brevis has its muscular part completely within the foot itself. This muscle originates on the medial part of the calcaneus and partly the plantar aponeurosis, just like abductor hallucis, and then it's going to insert on the middle phalanges of the lateral four toes. So it's going to have tendons that extend towards digits two through five, and more specifically the middle phalanges of each of those. Okay? That's flexor digitorum brevis. And with those insertions, flexor digitorum brevis is going to flex digits two through five at both the metatarsophalangeal joint and the proximal interphalangeal joint. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, in terms of the innervation of all of these muscles, what I want to mention is that right here you can see in this layer, we've got three medial plantar nerves, and over here we've got two lateral plantar nerves. Every single intrinsic muscle of the foot, which is everything here except for these two tendons, they're all going to be innervated either by the medial plantar nerve or the lateral plantar nerve. Now, rather than go through the innervations now, I'm going to come back to that at the end of the video because there's a certain rule to learn that makes the innervations really simple. All right, now let's go to layer two of the foot. And to do that, we're going to have to remove these three muscles, abductor hallucis, abductor digiti quinti, and flexor digitorum brevis, or at least reflect them if we're talking about cadaver terminology. So here's layer one right here again. Here's abductor hallucis, right? You can see it going to insert on the, uh, the medial side of the proximal phalanx of the hallux. Here's flexor digitorum brevis. You can see four tendons extending to the middle phalanx of digits two through five. And then here's abductor digiti quinti. You can see it actually extending toward the proximal phalanx of the digiti quinti, digit five. So we'd have to remove all three of these muscles. And when we do, it exposes four things, all right? Two are structures that we saw in a previous video when we covered uh, the muscles of the leg. And those are flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus. More specifically, their tendons. These two muscles are not intrinsic muscles of the foot. They're extrinsic muscles because even though they control movements of the foot and the toes, their muscular bellies do not lie in the foot. Instead, they lie in the leg. In fact, they actually lie deep to the gastrocnemius soleus complex. Okay? This is the tendon of flexor hallucis longus. Notice that it's going, of course, toward the hallux. Right? This is flexor digitorum longus. This one 
is extending its tendons towards digits two through five. If we're gonna get really specific with these, both of these muscles originate on the tibia and the fibula respectively. Okay? Now notice flexor digitorum longus inserts on the distal phalanx of the lateral four digits, and flexor hallucis longus inserts on the distal phalanx of the big toe. Contrast that to some of these that we saw up here. If we look at flexor digitorum brevis, notice that this one inserted on the middle phalanges of the lateral four toes, so basically digits two through five. Whereas flexor digitorum longus goes all the way out to the distal phalanx of the lateral four digits, digits two through five. Keep that in mind, because that's gonna create something we're about to look at. So look here. If we look at flexor digitorum brevis in layer one, we follow its tendon out. I'm gonna zoom in here actually to digit two. If we look at its tendon, notice that when it goes to insert on the middle phalanx, of let's say digit two right here, notice the tendon actually bifurcates. Around the time that it hits the proximal phalanx, the tendon bifurcates and it extends out to the middle phalanx. Look what comes out from underneath that in between the two bifurcated tendons. This is actually the tendon of flexor digitorum longus. So flexor digitorum longus tendon is actually deep to the flexor digitorum brevis tendon. But when the flexor digitorum brevis tendon bifurcates, the flexor digitorum longus tendon comes out from underneath and then rides between those two branches of the tendon out toward the distal phalanx. And you can see that on every single one of these digits. Here's the synovial sheaths blocking it, but again, it would be on all of these digits, two through five. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, those are two structures we see in layer two. Those are tendons. They're the tendons of extrinsic muscles we saw before. There's actually two intrinsic muscles in layer two, and those are the lumbrical muscles and the quadratus plantae. Now, for the lumbrical muscles, there's four of them, one for each of the digits two through five. And what you should notice is that they're actually originating off of the tendons of flexor digitorum longus. So notice here's one tendon of flexor digitorum longus that's going to digit two. The first lumbrical is actually coming directly off of that. So if we want to look at the lumbricals, their origin is really the medial borders of the tendons of flexor digitorum longus. And then they're going to insert on the basis of the proximal phalanges of digits two through five, and also the dorsal digital expansions. These are regions of, of connective tissue that surround the entire digit to protect and hold in all the structures that are in there, including nerves, arteries, veins, and all sorts of stuff. Okay, that's part of their insertion as well. And we look at the lumbricals, they have a couple of functions and it depends on which joint you're looking at. If we're talking about the metatarsophalangeal joint, it's gonna allow flexion of that joint. But if we're talking about the proximal or distal interphalangeal joints, it's gonna result in extension of those. Okay, so those are your lumbrical muscles and there's one for each digit two through five. The other muscle that we have here that's intrinsic is called quadratus plantae. These are both quadratus plantae. It's a two-headed muscle. And what you can see here is that quadratus plantae extends really mostly from the calcaneus right here to the flexor digitorum longus muscle. So if we want to talk about its origin and insertion, quadratus plantae originates from the plantar surface of the calcaneus and then inserts on the tendon of flexor digitorum longus. Now to understand the function of quadratus plantae, we need to look at actually the angle of this tendon of flexor digitorum longus. Even though the individual tendons seem to be parallel to the long axis of the foot near the toes, notice that the common tendon is actually directed uh, upward at an angle, upward that is toward the belly of the muscle. If it were to contract just like this, it would actually pull the toes at an angle and that wouldn't be good. We actually need the direction of the force to be directly toward the calcaneus in order for this movement to be effective for flexion of the toes. So quadratus plantae, you can see here, it's gonna originate off the calcaneus and then it really inserts on that tendon of flexor digitorum longus. And what it does when it contracts is it co-contracts with flexor digitorum longus and it redirects the line of pull so that way the net force is directed toward the calcaneus. 
This kind of goes into vector addition when you're looking at physics, but if you have a force that's directed this way, that's flexor digitorum longus, and a force that's directed this way, that's quadratus plantae, the horizontal components cancel out and the net force is directed directly toward the calcaneus. So quadratus plantae's action is to redirect the line of pull of the tendons of flexor digitorum longus so that the force is directed posteriorly toward the heel. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. That's layer two. We have two tendons, flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus, and then two intrinsic muscles, quadratus plantae and the lumbricals one through four. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.